see that Cotto, who is given credit by most observers for being amazingly mature for his age, is still only 23. He was a star for Puerto Rico at the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 and gives up six year, or has a six-year age advantage over Sosa. A one-inch height advantage for Sosa. Arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, an inch and a half for Sosa. They weighed in at 140 and 139 and a half, and you can see that unofficially by tonight, Miguel Cotto is already hydrated up to 153 pounds for a nine pound unofficial weight edge over Sosa as they go into the ring. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Miguel Cotto Victoriano Sosa fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges are going to use to score each individual round clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold Letterman. Let's take a look at Victoriano Sosa. If you're an HBO boxing fan, you saw him last spring here on HBO against Floyd Mayweather Jr. That fight was in Fresno, California and went the distance. Prior to that, he knocked down 135-pound titleist Paul Spatafora twice before ultimately losing a decision to Spatafora. So for Cotto, one question is, can he knock this man out, which neither Mayweather nor Spatafora was able to do? Sosa, by the way, uh, claims to be a cousin of uh, Sammy Sosa, but says he gave up his baseball career when he caught a fastball in the side and elected to go after the pitcher with the bat. He may need a bat tonight. He may need a bat because of that nine pound weight advantage. What do you make of that, George? One fighter coming in at 144 and the other now all the way up to 153. Unsafe? Uh, really, it can't help the, the big, the heavy opponent because he may lose a little of the speed he needs. This guy, he, he, he's going to be calling on every inch of speed to try to time with Sosa. Sosa is not an easy guy to hit. And this may be the toughest fight on Cotto's career. Well, and it's been nothing but great success recently for Miguel Cotto, who in his last six fights has scored six impressive knockouts, including the TKO of previously unbeaten Charles Mausa in his last fight. What is uh, impressive about Co Cotto compared to uh, many of his 2000 uh, Olympic uh, teammates and opponents is that maturity you mentioned earlier he has talent, yes, all of them do, but uh, he also has discipline, he has intelligence, he will go as far as his talent allows him to, and perhaps even farther. You know, sometimes when you lose a lot of weight, uh, lose a lot of water to gain weight, you gain a lot quicker. Some of these guys come in more natural, which Sosa did, sometimes that is an advantage. Well, we shall see whether it's a real 153 or a desperation 153 for Cotto as he goes into the ring. He constantly fights under the pressure of being compared to Felix Trinidad. So far, it hadn't bothered him one bit. And before we go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer, I want to take this moment on behalf of HBO Sports to congratulate Michael, who became a grandfather yesterday. Brand new granddaughter, Samantha Michelle Buffer, born in eastern Pennsylvania. So with our congratulations, let's go to the granddaddy of ring announcers, Michael Buffer himself. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand Hotel Casino of Las Vegas, where tonight, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present an evening of championship boxing. Brought to you in association with the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser, and HBO Sports. All bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges at ringside scoring this first contest will be Carol Castellano, Keith McDonald, and Glenn Trowbridge. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International Super Lightweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, blue, and white, and officially weighing 139 and one half pounds. He has an outstanding professional record, 42 bouts. 37 victories, including 27 knockouts, with only three defeats and two draws. From Santiago and La Republica de Dominica, the challenger, Victoriano Sosa. 
and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with gold. He officially weighs 140 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 18 bouts, 18 victories, including 15 knockouts, from Paguas, Puerto Rico, the defending, undefeated, WBC International Super Lightweight Champion, Miguel Cotto. Okay, on the rope. Okay, gentlemen, trunks are high here, trunks are high here. Any punch thrown in this area is okay. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times, keep the feet at all times, and what I'd say you must obey. Touch gloves, good luck. Brennan Suarte, touch up. Does Soto, with his uh, speed and boxing ability, have some questions to ask of Cotto that he hasn't been asked yet? So far, Cotto has managed to approach every fight as though it's a sparring session. His level of relaxation and confidence hasn't been shaken in any fight en route to his 18 win, 15 KO record. Sosa's got to move and he's got to land occasional punches to make Cotto lose his confidence. This is one thing he's had in all of his fights, confidence. Now, Take it away from him by making him miss and hurt hitting him. It may be instructive that the first punch that Sosa landed was a body punch. He feels that Cotto holds his hands a little too hot. But if he goes to Cotto's body, he has to drop his hands to do it and runs the risk of allowing Cotto to catch him with something upstairs. Cotto has so far shown shocking power with the left hook. Catches Sosa with a little counter left hook there. That's why moving is your best strategy now. Move and jab. Make this Cotto reach out for everything he gets. Don't let him land any short punches. Sosa is not doing a good job of that right now. Cotto with a quick combination there. All three punches landed. The left hook both to the body and upstairs, his primary weapon. Sometimes he'll switch southpaw to set up the chance to throw more power punches with the left hand. Good jab by Cotto. When you're in with a good solid puncher like Cotto, you got to make certain that you don't try to become a good solid puncher with him. Keep stay on the move. Make them reach out for everything they get. Larry pointed out that Sosa's first landed punch was a body shot. Since then, he's focused most of his attack upstairs. Because you got to drop your hand to get another body shot, and this guy counters good with those short shots. Exactly. No push, no push. One of the things that makes Goto such an effective counter puncher is his balance. His feet are always seemingly in excellent position for him to get something on the punch, George. That's right, because the fighters don't make him reach out. Make him stay a little bit out of his range. Jab him and get out of his range. Make him reach out and miss you. Sosa stepping up the attack there. Most of the punches were blocked. Goto coming back with one left hand. First time Sosa looked to see what damage he had done. Cotto looked, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, when you're that good, you got a tendency to admire your work. He's good. And as we go to the two fighters' corners, both of them primarily speak Spanish in the corners, and our interpreter is Ray Torres. 
Okay, that's it. Always first. Big deep breath. Very good. Okay, put the, put the bucket down. Okay, concentrate on your thing. You're the one. You're doing well. Don't wait for him. When you're inside, okay, work your combinations. Looks as though there's already a trickle of blood, trickle of blood inside Victoriano Sosa's mouth. Copy box numbers in round one. Cotto 20 out of 67. Sosa 6 out of 48. Cotto throwing 32 jabs in the round and landing 10. As you watch him jab, double jab, hook off the jab, you might keep in mind that just like Oscar De La Hoya and a variety of other fighters we've seen in the past few years, Cotto is a southpaw in every way other than how he stands to fight. Fights in a conventional stance, but writes with the left hand, brushes teeth with the left hand, and, uh, and throws hard left hooks with the left hand as well. Yeah, they get you in the gym sometimes if you're a left-hander, and uh, automatically the trainers just switch you around. But it, it works better for you because you can do so many things on the opposite side that other fighters can't. Well, you're putting your strong side out front. Is basically and you what can you even do. think another way. Most fighters can't. Sosa hasn't done a good job of moving his legs. He's taller. He hasn't used his reach. Right hand over the top, cleanly landed by Cotto. Sosa has flurried on a few occasions and then receded from his activity as Cotto has countered with blasts of his own. Now Sosa picks up the movement a little bit. Is the only fight I've seen throughout uh, the last few years who gets better every time he fights. Brings something to the, he, he's solid, that's what it is. Whatever he was doing last year, he's doing it and he's solid with it. He's not missing positions back. And that's a hard thing to miss. It's not flashy. He's so patient. He allows the effect of his work to accumulate gradually without worrying about it from moment to moment. And that's been a trait of a lot of Puerto Rican boxers. They actually get better and better. They don't get tougher. They can't say that. They just get better at their trade. Has to do with the quality of work in the gyms down there? And good trainers, evidently. Cotto's trainer is his father, Evangelista Cotto, but he has tremendous second man, Miguel Diaz, working in the corner as well. Hard right hand by Sosa. Backs Cotto up. It was a good move, but yet again, you don't want to get into a punching match with a puncher. And Cotto goes immediately to the body of Sosa. Trying to punish him a little bit for the big shot that Sosa landed upstairs. Coming up Monday, Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories, a look at the financial troubles surrounding the Milwaukee Brewers and the public outcry which has followed. March 13, live on HBO World Championship Boxing, Shane Mosley and Winky Wright will unify the 154-pound crowd. March 27, Boxing After Dark, Jermaine Taylor against Alex Bonima, and Dominic Quinn faces Monty Barrett. And starting April 2, it's on the record with Bob Costas every Friday night, beginning at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Getting ready for round three of Miguel Cotto against Victoriano Sosa. Already, after 18 professional frights, the 23-year-old Cotto from Puerto Rico has moved up to the number one spot in one World Governing Bodies ranking list, closing in on a potential title shot at 140 pounds, where the kingpin of the division is Costa Zoo, 
And Costa Zoo may realistically only have a handful of fights left in his career, if that. <laughs> there's even there's better news for Cotto, and uh, that may be the return to the ring of Felix Trinidad, which I think could relieve some of the pressure on him in Puerto Rico to be rushed to a place where he doesn't have to be yet. Larry, uh, why do you say rushed? I mean, he, ha he hasn't faced a difficult obstacle in the ring so far as he's logically moved from opponent to opponent. I agree with you. And, uh, but but the, the pressure could grow from the fans there who want to see their next star. And he should be moved on this deliberate pace against better and better fighters as he is tonight uh, before he takes on a significant guy in his division. It'll just prepare him not just to fight a top guy, but to beat a top guy. I think if he gets past this guy, some good grades, it's not like there's anyone out there can beat him. This guy's solid. This will be a challenge for him. That's a big if. Do either of you think there's any chance that Costa Zoo's people would ever risk their fighter against a rising young talent like Cotto? Well, if if they could make enough money, you know, and they would say, uh, make one huge payday and go and go home. Oh, that left hook left hurt so so. Tremendous left hook up and under by Cotto and Sosa, badly hurt by the punch, as Larry said. Now you'll watch Cotto's finishing skills. A minute left to go in the round. And see the patience of the young fighter as he sets up, throws the jab, just keeps talking. He's got his fellow in trouble, and he hasn't gotten wild yet. That's going to be the test. Can you just go back to the basics and finish this guy without getting wild? Body shot. Sosa not able to throw back yet. Now he begins to throw. Cota did not abandon the body. Although he has his man hurt, bobs and weaves and keeps his eye on that body. That's the sign of a great fighter. I love the way when he has an opponent in trouble, he doesn't pressure them with his hands by rushing in and throwing a lot of punches. He pressures them with his feet by getting closer and closer and closer. And in position to do what he's going to do. And that frightens you more as a fighter when you know the guy's in position to hurt you. Almost landed the right hand shot inside. Miguel Cotto with a dominant round against Victoriano Sosa. There's the left hook that really hurt Sosa in the middle of the round. You know, earlier in the previous round, Sosa hit Cotto with a crisp left hook. But as you can see, when the bigger man lands, it has a more significant impact. Let's go. Yeah, you got to be calm. You cut the ring and don't get crazy there. Spit your water out. Okay. Hit him and, hit him and move. All right, second half. It may be that the toughest fight that Cotto has for the next year or so will be with the scale because uh, he is a welterweight and a junior welterweight's body. They're keeping. Uh, his weight down so that he could be extra strong in this division. Harold, how do you have it? <laughs> okay, Jim. 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing. Miguel Cotto. Jim, I don't know. I may have made a mistake in that third round because of the fact that that's very close to a 10-8 round for Miguel Cotto. I mean, he won it decisively, and you certainly could have gone 10-8. One quick thing. Uh, we checked with the Nevada Athletic Commission and the WBC. Only the official weigh-in counts. In other words, there's no penalty for gaining 13 pounds. Now, Cotto is having to reach out for his punches. That's something Sosa has worked out, should have done earlier. Make him get off that excellent balance he's got.
kind of adjustment could Sosa make at this point, George? To, he can, uh, never too late to get on your, put your boxing <laughs> shoes on, stay out of range. You jab. When you're not jabbing, stay out of it. If you're not punching him, don't touch, don't let him touch you. Sosa decided to try the opposite, go in and attack and pressure Cotto. And that's what he got in return via counter punches. Don't Four, punch with punches. Five, don't even six, try it. Don't go there. Seven, uh, he went to the okay. body effectively, on, and the problem on. was he stayed in there a beat too long, and he caught something in return. He caught that left hand on the uppercut again. Look at the bravery of Sosa trying to fire his way out of this thing. Dangerous as he just throws and throws. Goto picking his spots, though. Cotto is determined to stay in the body. That's wonderful. Once you hurt a guy and go right back to the body, make certain he can't hurt you if you go next round to finish him out. He just rocked Sosa with a left hook to the body that moved Sosa about a foot and a half over. That Sosa is determined to mix it up. Is he brave or what? He is brave. You see the strength and power of Miguel Cotto. Paul Spadafora. And Floyd Mayweather didn't really hurt Victoriano Sosa. This is something entirely different. Okay. Sosa come, can't come. believe this. Come. Now he's stunned. No three knockdown rule in effect. But it's hard to imagine Kenny Bayless. Body. Sosa out the of body it. did it. It was body punching that made him faint. George. What a performance. Performance. This guy is the number one contender in the world right now. Doesn't matter who it is. I would, if I was a betting man, I'd put my money on so, uh, Cotto. Miguel Cotto has tremendous skills. 